Creating Old Style Portraits. In this video we're going to look at creating old style portraits and in this particular case looking at tin types. One of the images that I'm going to apply to this has uh, been kindly given to me by Kerry McEwen Photography and uh, this is the image here uh, that we are going to use and I'll put a link to her Instagram page down below so thanks very much for letting me use that. The techniques used here can be used in any image whatsoever and I use them as an extra layer because it suits the way that I work with this. You can put them in also by adding an image texture, but I prefer to do it this way so that I have the layer separate in its own so that I can tweak it a wee bit further if need be. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, now that we're in Luminar, what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to edit this image before I overlay any new images to it. So. As it's way, meant to be way, way back during tin type photography and slides, plates, anything like that, what we're actually going to do here is we're going to think how it would be taken then. So the first thing we have to do from then is go in and make it black and white. Now, I'm also going to push the yellows, which is going to affect the skin slightly. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the reds back in the dress because it's a modern pattern and it's we're going to try and emulate a really old photograph. So there we go, that's it converted to black and white. The next thing I am going to do is I am going to go into AI structure and I'm going to soften it slightly as well. So I'm going to pull that back to give a nice softer glow to the image as you can see. See the difference in the hair if I do that. You see the difference in the hair there, and we now have a soft glow to the image. Okay, next I'm going to get into the portrait mode. The portrait tools, and apply the Orton effect to soften it even further. So now that we've done that, I'm then going to get into high key, and I'm going to add more high key to it, just to brighten it up because of the amount of light that would be used to capture the image back then. So we can do that as well. I'm going to push it to around about there. I'll see what happens with the blacks if I begin to lift them. Yep, nothing going too far wrong there. I may go back into the tools and lift the shadows slightly. Just about there. Okay, right. Next thing I'm going to do is go into layers and I'm going to add a new image layer and this one is going to be tin type and that will drop on top of the image so you can see the old effect that we're going for straight away next thing I'm going to pull the opacity down and then I'm going to go through the blend modes to see what one works best with this I'm going to show you another example with a lighter background after this image so I'm going to go to multiply screen Overlay, soft light. So it looks as if it's going to be screen with this one. And I'm going to pull the opacity back just to about there. So you can see the effect we're going for here. We might even go back and pull the highlights down in the face. But we'll try this at the moment just to see. So from here, I am now going to add another texture. Or should I say another new image layer. And what I'm going to do for this one, I am going to add dust and scratches. And then with this, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to pull the opacity back. And then we're going to go into the blend modes. And see what one again works best, best with the image. That's actually okay. Colour burn, screen, just a bit too much, but the screen actually works as well, quite like that. Soft, soft light's working really well actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at soft light, but I'm also going to pull the image opacity back. So that we have that 
And you can see where we're going with, with the image. We can keep layering up and layering up with this. I can also move the order of them. And you see what happens. Get a slightly different effect because of the blend mode we've applied to the layers below. So if I take that one back up, and I turn that back on, you can see again this has a slightly different effect as well, being that the dust and scratches are showing through more in this one because the dust and scratches are blending to the tin type, which is blending to the first image of Cheryl Ann herself. So that's how we would go with this. And with that, you can see everything that you can do. I can then go in and go back onto the first image, go back into there and pull the high key back slightly back into my layers, turn the top layer back on, that looks slightly better for this one. After all that, I can go in and add a new adjustment layer and then we can edit it overall. So for example, I could lift the exposure, which will lift the exposure of everything. I can darken it down. I'll just take it to around there. Smart contrast, one of my favourites. If I take that really far, you'll see what it does. So I am going to go for about there with the smart contrast, because remember that's affecting everything below this layer. Shadows, if I lift them, does it work? No, because it brings in too much here. So I'm going to reset the shadows because I don't want your eye drawn to the scratches. I want them to complement the image that we have. AI Enhance, would I use this in the image? Partially. Just very, very subtly, I'd actually pull that back again. Black and white conversion, I'm not going to use because I have this lovely sepia tone to the entire image, so I'm not going to use that at all. Any of the colours here, I could go in and increase the saturation, which will increase the sepia, but I don't want to. I'm actually quite happy with it as it is. Right, that's us into the second image, and I'm just going to show you because this is a white background. This is the image from the previous video. So I'm going to show you exactly what happens with this one and I'll run through this but I'll tell you what I'm doing as I go. First thing I'm going to do is add new image layer and I'm just going to add the same tin type to it. So there we have the same tin type. I'm going to drop the opacity of it slightly and then I'm going to go in through the blend modes. And you see that multiply is working better than this one than screen and lighting because it's the way it affects the colours in this case the black and white or the 50% grey below it. So multiply there works best for me. I may take the opacity back up just to add a bit more grit to the image. Right, quite happy with that. Next I'm going to add another overlay and this time I'm going to add tin type 4 just to see what this is like. And these are the overlays that I'm using just now. These are the ones that I have created. So again, I'm going to pull this opacity back. I am then going to go in and see what blend mode works best here. And everybody will have their favourite, depending on what you want to get from the image. And I actually quite like that. It's quite punchy. So what we've not done is we haven't jumped back into this. I went into the portrait mode. Push the high key because we want more light on the actual subject. We haven't been into the Orton effect and softened the image. Applied that nice glow to it. And we also need to go back into AI structure and bring the structure back just to soften the image. That looks fine like that. So what we'll do is I'll turn that layer on, see what happens. Yep, quite happy with that. Turn that one on. Yep, quite happy with that. But the one thing you can do with this as well, is you can go into Layer Transform. I'm going to revert it back to this, but just to let you see. And I'm going to take the image layer that way, and then take it out there, and take it out to there, and click Done. So you'll see the verticals that were running down here, the streaks that were running down here. They're now running across the image. So you can move that around. You can put them at any angle at all. What 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them back to where they were. Right, that's me reverted it back to the way it was originally. And I'm quite happy with the look of this. Last but not least, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Then I am going to go in and push the smart contrast slightly to about there. Exposure to about there. Shadows, I'm going to lift the shadows. Light. And looking at that, I am quite happy with that. So I'm going to click Apply. Hopefully you found that helpful and fun to try. It is something that's worth trying. It's just experimenting, exploring the software and see what it can do. As you know, I'm a big fan of compositing work. Apart from my landscapes and the portraits, I'm a big fan of compositing work. And although this isn't really compositing, it's beginning to build an image from one image. So you're, in this case, because I'm adding them as image layers, it is compositing to a point. I, I don't want to argue that one down below in the comments. But as you're, add, you're adding image layers to something, so it's worth trying out for yourself. The textures that I've used here is only some of the textures that I'm going to make available. I'm curating quite a few textures which will include these ones you see here, plus snow, rain, lightning, different things to add into your work phone to enhance your images. As I say, I prefer adding them as image layers within the program. I just, I find with my workflow and possibly because of what Photoshop as well, I find I've got a little bit more control when I do it this way, but it's just the way I prefer to do it. So each to their own when it comes to that in the workflow. But the textures, you can go and shoot yourself. You can go and shoot these or create these yourself in any packages at all. So it's something that you don't have to think about how am I going to get this text. There's plenty available on the internet as well. So download them and try them. I'm going to create a pack specifically for Luminar. Uh, although be, you'll be able to use them in different uh, what Photoshop or whatever, I'm going to create a pack that's specific for Luminar and specific for the type of editing that I do and the stuff that I find fun as well. So I'll make that available in the very near future and so that you know when it's available. I will tell you, but I'll put the advertisement for it up here, similar to this, and you'll see that it's available for download. So hopefully you enjoyed that video, big thumbs up if you did and if you'd like to check out some more videos in the channel below and if you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be absolutely fantastic. Thanks again for watching.